worked just fine. So it looks like I have that. And have we missed any other slide speaker? I think. Uh, Nats is trying the test. Hey, uh, this is Nats, just trying to test the mic. You're loud and clear. Thank you. We are missing. Now, DJ's there. DJ, have you tested your mic? That is a good. Oh, you. Testing one, two, three. Loud and clear. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Jeff, did DJ test? Not yet. DJ, would you say hi, Baba? Both DJ and Swadesh, would you say hi? Uh, pick your choice. Hello. Thanks, Can DJ. Thanks, DJ. Oh. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> morning, Sue. Morning, Jeff. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. We're getting, a little bit of echo. We're getting a little bit of echo through your end of things, uh, DJ, so, so you may want to uh, go to, uh, go to uh, an actual, an actual head microphone. microphone. Okay, okay. We'll, uh, we'll wait we'll for wait. you to get there and test. Swadesh, how would you like to test your mic? Good morning, Swadesh. Could you say hi? Hey, Sue. Awesome. You're coming in loud and clear. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Okay, I think out of the other participants. Um, uh, hello. DJ, try again. Um, I think it's better now. It much, is much better. better. Thank you. <laughs> K10, would you say good morning? Good evening. Good morning. Good evening. And there's a movie that would say good morning, good evening, and good night. I'll fill you in on that movie trivia sometime. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start. This has been recorded. This is uh, a note well. If you haven't read it, please read it now. And it's a code of context. So you agree to it by participating. And now we'll go to the next set of slides. Here's our agenda for today. Okay. Let's see if I can. Uh, so we're going to go through chair slides and what we're going to do, make any comments, complain. Uh, then we're going to go through the car presentation. I have a shepherd's report uh, and DJ has a car status and example. Then we're going to do the same with CT. Uh, we have a status, and Nats has an, a discussion of the SRV6 material from CT. Uh, we'll may have some discussion back and forth, and then uh, Ying Zhen has um, graciously agreed to be the speaker to review BGP Send Hold Timer. We will be working group less calling all of this before ITF. Just a moment. So uh, we will need aid from our area director uh, and the spring and best chairs as we head for the car and CT. Just a minute. Thank you for your patience. Uh, and so I've sent messages to the working group. Uh, we are in the middle of a transition between two ADs. Uh, so uh, we will be asking our new area director uh, to help us along with that. And we may ask Spring and Best. Uh, Alvaro and Joel have already helped me with some of the drafts because some of the drafts in CAR and CT are still in adoption stage. Um, and then we may be asking best chairs, um, PCE, excuse me, uh, we did, I sent it to all the spring chairs, uh, 
Joel and uh, Alvaro uh, res replied for the uh, spring chairs. Uh, we're going to ask the B best the PC LSVR and uh, LSR chairs as well if, if there's any comment. Just a reminder, the car and CT will be experimental drafts and the one question we need from the ADs uh, as well as uh, help with the final reviews is do they need an interoperability draft to take these to RFC? Any questions on that, on the aid we need from the ADs and other people? So uh, please, Drew and other folks who are in the PCE, watch for my email today after we finish the write-up from today's meeting. Okay, uh, this is just a status. We do that every week. We had some adoptions um, on the uh, working group that I said we'd love to discuss over the holidays because uh, due to many people being able to have a three-week holiday instead of a shortened one. Um, the draft G IDR MBVG extension for MAP6 is an active discussion between Jeff and the authors. Uh, Kali Raj uh, IDR multi next stop attribute 10 is adopted, but the chairs feel this will be a longish discussion as there are many issues uh, and has some way to go. And um, draft singly IDR BGP generic metric AIP had a lot of interest, but we're waiting for the authors uh, to discuss. Uh, Kali Raj IDR multi next top attribute will be discussed. Our working group in last call in February, I believe I mentioned that I will be working group last calling CAR and then a CT. Uh, a two document series for CT, the CT draft and the SRV6. And then we will be working group less calling IDR send hold timer. We will probably send IDR send hold timer um, off somewhat at the same time, but if it gets overwhelmed, we will uh, hold the uh, discussion a little longer. Uh, and the other draft status, uh, we have SDN awaiting uh, if we get a third implementation. And Katon, I need and I need to circle up on the draft IDR segment routing TE policy and segment types. We've got to resolve a few comments. And entropy label just needs a second implementation. Okay, uh, and these uh, adoption calls, I think, will probably slide into late February or March, simply because we're trying to clear our docket. Any questions on the status? Okay, let me grab the next of the preloaded shares. Okay. Just a minute. Let's see if I've got the right one. OK. So the schedule for the car and CT, you'll see this at the beginning of both of the car and the CT slides. Uh, and DJ and Swadesh, she'll be up as soon as I finish. Um, we're probably going to try to hold a working group last call from the 1st of February, which is this Thursday, to the 22nd of February. Now, that anticipates uh, that I get all the edits that have been promised by everyone and that I resolve uh, open issues. Uh, and I'll go through how that uh, will go through it. So. In the past, if you're curious, there's a GitHub. The final discussions will be annotated this week in GitHub. 
There was a first working group last call and my shepherd's review of 05. There were about 10 uh, or 12 technical issues. However, I believe uh, the authors and I have come to a resolution on most of those. Uh, we're just waiting to review the final text. I'll do comments on the final text. I had about 40 editorial issues, but that's because my uh, area directors informed me they would be uh, looking for more exact um, English. So I gave it my PhD editing. So uh, that is something that people will get used to. Um, I will continue to update uh, those reviews both on the mail list for summaries uh, before we start on working group um, last the second working group last call but I also if you have questions um, either send me an email or pop an issue into the uh, pop a comment into the github um, my understanding in DJ and Swadesh's uh, my understanding of IP NLI prefix test is the last I had you were in interoperability tests, but my understanding is that you were uh, farther along on that. Uh, maybe you could comment uh, now on that. Yeah, so we, uh, and hey, so, uh, so yes, yeah, so we have uh, an implementation from Cisco. Uh, the Arcus implementation is in. Uh, progress uh, so we're just waiting for um, you know uh, an ad from KU. okay so um, that sounds good okay let's talk about the directorate reviews uh, this set of things um, okay it looks like I've got my first set of slides so there will be a second set of slides that I updated based on DJ's comments and Sudesh's comments. I'm going to talk through them, but hopefully the the slides that are the final ones you have online, uh, they're just minor nits, and I'll uh, this so I'll talk through it. So we have directorate reviews that we have been doing with uh, version since the first working group last call. So we've had routing directorate, ops directorate, secure directorate, and TSV. Now, routing directorate, as you know, is the requirement from the area directors. And you can go there and read the link. Uh, ben Nivens had issues, and then he cleared it. A second reviewer, Mike uh, McBride, had a few issues. And again, he had mostly editorial issues. Uh, Ying Zen had uh, a r excellent officer review, and she also okayed version five. And Yoavner, uh, who's really good in sector, just gave some nits. I gave a very specific tr TSV review because I anticipate um, problems in the ISG because this is the first of the intent routing. Uh, I We got a good review out of the TSV directorate. Uh, uh, so we uh, it, they had on the right track. So I think that's pretty good so that when we go to uh, the final working group last call, that'll work. I had a targeted review in the notes, but apparently that didn't get transferred so i had to have some email conversation okay uh idr chair reviews i've given my chair review over the weekend to a five and i'll be editing issues to github if you want to participate in any of the discussions this week i urge you to get a github uh, id and to look for summaries on the working group. We're going to move very fast to clear everything by Thursday. If you would like to join a chair Zoom discussion, just let me know. Jeff Haas uh, will see the uh, Dash 06 and verify it for us. At least he's been kind enough to promise that. 
I will, I've asked the area directors uh, to give us an early review of terminology and process. I haven't yet received that. I'm hoping I'll get that this week. Uh, and it's just to look at the first couple pages. I'm going to send the first couple pages of uh, both the CAR and the CT draft out to the other chairs to make sure our terminology is correct. Then I have two sets of comments that have been uh, running uh, from uh, last September when we had our deep last deep dive with CAR and Nats and DJ have been discussing. I will be, I've added that to the uh, GitHub repository and I will be editing that active. Again, this is a monitor group. I will also give daily summaries to the working group. This is an attempt to go fairly quickly uh, through the last little bit because my understanding from your feedback is that uh, people are ready to go to the next working group call and they'd like me to just sort of push through these issues. Okay, uh, this is a set of comments that were earlier. I'll just whip through it if you have questions. These were the issues raised in the working group last call. Uh, my Shepherd's report have reviewed some of this. We'll go continue to go through it. Um, the this is what the authors presented at 9:25. The use of two TLVs procedures for type two and type three. I've asked them to present some of the the examples for type one and type two as you go through color domains, which have different color assignments and service routes versus infrastructure routes. If you missed the uh, presentation, we're, we're not going to repeat it. So please go back. You should be able to review it. Um, you know, we had a discussion after the last interim, uh, which is whether the IP prefix or the type two in the car is in the charter of the adopted draft and we agreed to that and that's is the final comments we're following up this week okay uh i'm now going to swap over to dj or swadesh who is presenting this morning hey so uh yeah i'll, I'll present awesome uh let me make sure okay dj if is this the right one um yes it looks like the right one uh, so yeah, okay. could we yeah for the next slide please okay i will go to the next slide yeah I, this is just a quick uh you know just a look at the status uh, as the draft uh, draft has been progressing um uh the, there was there were a change set of changes in uh, version 1 and 2 that were done early last year um those you know mostly addra address the um issues that were raised during the working group adoption call um and these uh, changes uh, you know had been presented last year at uh, multiple interims and working group sessions so you know, largely these were all done, uh, you know, by uh, by the July you know, ITF. Um, and then from version three to version five, um, we addressed um, you know the set of comments that came in during the first working group last call, uh, as well as a bunch of the early directorate reviews, as uh, you know, Sue just uh, you know went through. Uh, again, the um, the questions that were raised, um, you know, on the um, on the SRB six related changes, we uh, you know presented and discussed at the um, at the September interim. Um, so most of the changes have been um, you know to clarify uh, you know the the text, um, the procedures, um, and you know some re uh, you know organization of the doc to improve you know the co context and clarity. Uh, thanks to all the folks who had uh, commented uh, and provided feedback. Um, 
what we are in the midst of now is working with uh, Sue on um, addressing the uh, you know the second set of uh, Shepherd's review comments. And again, we just had uh, those comments discussed last uh, Friday, and uh, we'll be publishing uh, an updated version of the draft um, you know in a day or two with uh, uh, you know with uh, text to address those comments. Um, as well as uh, to the you know to the few uh, additional uh, directorate review uh, comments, mostly those are editorial, as Sue mentioned. Um, ne next slide, uh, please. Yeah, so uh, for just from a status point of view, that was you know mainly it. Um, um, the one thing that Sue asked was to uh, walk through the the lcm uh, you know the local color mapping extended community um, you know uh, behavior uh, as the car routes go across multiple color domains these are uh, documented uh, you know are described in the draft uh, you know both in the main text as well as in um, um, you know an uh, illustration in the uh, in the appendix but i'll just quickly uh, just you know, go through it uh, with respect to both uh, the type one and the type two route. Um, a quick refresher: the local color mapping extended community is uh, uh, is you know is an extended community that carries um, the color associated with the car route uh, or the you know NLRI as the route goes across different administrative domain boundaries uh, what uh, we call a color domain the uh, idea being that as you go across uh, a color domain boundary the intent to color mapping is likely to change because different providers would have their own um, you know uh, ma mappings for the color so the so even though the car nlri May carry um, you know a color uh, such as the you know the e comma c color in the you know type one route um, in in a different color domain that color needs to get remapped into uh, a locally assigned color um, and that uh, is carried in the uh, LCM extended community with respect to the functioning of the LCM EC community it is like any other community that uh, you know may get uh, advertised across uh, you know a provider boundary um, there is a peering agreement between the providers um, as to you know to say what color is being used for what purpose or what intent and accordingly um, you know the um, either at the sender or the receiver uh, bgp speaker um, the color will get remapped, uh, you know, essentially a route policy that, uh, you know, uh, rewrites the color value to the local uh, color, which will be used in the receiver domain. And so this is no different than any other community uh, or, you know, route target, similar, you know, community values that get rewritten at, um, you know, at provider uh, uh, peering points. So now the, uh, with respect to the the type one route, um, since the NLRI has the um, the color that is being used, uh, you know, for the uh, that specific route in the originator color domain. Um, in this example, you know, color domain one being the originator color domain for um, a, a color aware route for the P, you know, E one. Um, the 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 route itself does not need any you know uh, uh, additional uh, community to carry the color so hence we see the route even comma c1 um uh in this uh, you know example without any lcm extended community uh, but as the route goes across um, a color domain boundary over here from color domain 1 to color domain 2 um, and you know between border router a uh, and border router b in the respective color domains the uh, lcm ec uh, will get uh, attached um, and so here you see the lcm ec in this example 
with the color C1, uh, that's uh, indicating the, you know, the color being used in color domain one for um, the intent low delay. Now at the border router B, uh, you know, as per the, you know, the peering agreement, uh, a route policy will rewrite that color C1 in the LCMEC to the local color. Uh, in this example, that's C2 in color domain two. And hence, you know, uh, all further operations, uh, you know, within on, on routers within color domain two will use uh, the color in the LCMEC, so C2, for uh, things like, um, you know, the next stop resolution, uh, as well as for service steering, uh, you know, of any uh, service route over this BGP car route. Um, as um, the route pro you know progresses, here we show an uh, example where um, domain two, color domain two, is also acting as a transit, um, you know, in a domain for the BGP car route to be advertised to color domain three. So as this um, uh, Ecoma C route gets advertised across the color domain boundary between you know domains two and three. Um, again, the the fact the fact that it already had a LCMEC means there's no you know um, need to uh, add the LCMEC at uh, at that color domain boundary that is between uh, border routers C and D. Uh, however. In color domain three, since uh, a different color in this example, C3 is being used for uh, the low delay intent. Again, the border router uh, D is, you know, is rewriting the color value to the local color, which is C3. And then subsequently within the color domain three, the same uh, you know, behavior ensues as we what we looked at uh, color domain two for all uh, purposes such as um, you know the steering and you know, next up resolution we end up using uh, the uh, color in the lcmec c3 in this uh, case now um when it comes to um, the the type 2 route now the um, as a refresher uh, so i don't know if you can i don't know if it's just me or um, is it possible to scroll up the slide a bit? Um, seems like it's. OK, uh, yeah, let me just uh, continue. So yeah, so the the type 2 route, um, the, the characteristic of the type 2 route is it the, the route a key is just the IP prefix, uh, because in this case, uh, uh, the the assignment of the IP prefix corresponds one is to one with a given intent. So there is a unique IP prefix per intent, um, you know, for a given um, uh, egress uh, device, such as you know the PE one. So here in this example, we have shown it by um, small, you know, even um, slash m uh, being that uh, prefix assigned for um, the intent low delay, uh, you know, intent color C1. Now, um, so the the color, you don't need the color in the NLRI, uh, since we need a unique uh, prefix, um, you know, uh, um, as part of the route. However, uh, you know, the color associated with that route, uh, C1 in this case, is still carried um, you know, for the purposes of next stop resolution uh, for route, you know, filtering other policies. Um, and so that color is carried in the LCM extended community. So in this case, we see the LCM EC being attached, um, you know, during the origination of the of the route. Um, so you see uh, that uh, in this example. So what that means is when this route goes across the color domain boundary of between A to B, um, there, there is already an LCMEC present. So hence, the only uh, action that needs to be taken is to rewrite that color to uh, the local color in the, you know, in the in the receiving color domain, which uh, in this case, again, is, you know, C2. So from here on, um, as the, this route propagates, you know, across uh, the routers, you know, the domain network domains in color domain two, 
as well as you know uh, gets uh, propagated to a color domain 3 the behavior is uh, you know exactly what we you know walk through for the type 1 route um yeah any questions um, Arka? any questions on this i see nats entering the queue hi are you able to hear me i can yes. hear you yeah hi uh, thanks uh, uh Danajai. um so the one thing that you can uh, emphasize on right here is uh, you have uh, uh, if you in in case of any cast scenario and multicolor domains so the car route itself is attached with the color easy so at this point uh, the car draft says if in my understanding is that uh, the color EC takes precedence at this at that point, even though there is a NLRA color, uh, the the C one in the NLRA becomes a pure distinguisher, and the color that takes precedence is the color EC. This is my understanding from the draft, from reading the draft and putting my comments through. So, if, if that's the case, what should LCM EC borrow? Should it take the C one from the NLRA, or should it take the color EC, which is the preferred? So I'm just uh, if you could emphasize a little bit more for, for clarity, that would be nice. So the, uh, the, 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 the so in this example, we've gone through the LCM EC. Uh, so we didn't, you know, um, have the color EC, but just to um, distinguish between the two, of course, you know, the draft has the, the, the details. Um, uh, as I mentioned, the LCM EC carries um, the color associated with the route um, so the intent you know of the of the car route uh, itself um for when we need um you know the that lc uh, the lcm ec uh, to be used in um, you know in lieu of either the route color as with the type 1 route in a, in a different color domain or when um the type two, you know in the case of the type 2 route where the route key is just the IP prefix, right? So the, th the key thing to note is the LCM EC, um, you know, indicates the color or the intent associated with the route. The color EC, on the other hand, um, as, you know, already was, uh, you know, the semantics that were established, um, you know, with the uh, RFC 9256, um, and e even, you know, um, uh, in our, as part of RFC 9012, that color extended community, when it is attached to any route, um, you know, car route as well as any, you know, other, you know, BGP SAPI route, indicates the color that is to be used for resolution of the uh, next hop, all right? Um, now, in the case of um, a, a, a car route, the you can have a, a very simple you know uh, network where all domains have uh, the same uh, color or the same intents uh, so for example you know if i was to just look at uh, a color domain one and whether even if there were like multiple network domains like igp areas or bgp asns in color domain one um let's say this in the simple case we only had you know uh, c1 enabled in all those domains for low delay in that case, you know, we do not need the color extended community on the on the car route because, uh, I mean, on the on the on the type one route specifically because you have the uh, or or even the type two route because you have the route color being um, enabled in all the uniformly in all the domains, right? C one in this example. But on the other hand, you know, there are there can be uh, uh, scenarios where not all colors or intents are enabled you know in the in the transport network in uh, either end to end or um, you know in specific uh, uh, you know domains like igp areas or bgp asns within the multi domain network in that case for res resolving the next hop uh, of a bgp car route um, in that particular domain we you know the operator can decide to use one of the existing intents you know or colors that are enabled in that domain 
and that can be automated by using the um, you know color extended community just like how it's been uh, you know defined in rfc uh, 9256 in that case the car route has additionally you know in addition to the nlri color all the or the lcm it has the color extended community which you know would be uh, typically a different color than what uh, is associated with the route color in, in this example and that is what would get used for the for the next stop resolution however the lcm ec or the nlri color remains in the route because it's it is what indicates the color for the route end to end through this multi domain uh, network so in a different domain the color extended community may get removed or it may get rewritten you know because some other color is being used for the underlying you know next stop resolution uh, but the um the end to end color is represented by the nlri color or or the lcmec and uh, and when it comes to steering uh, steering of a service route like an l3 vpn route or an internet service route DJ, uh, over I, over a bgp like car route mm -hmm. here no, just one uh, yeah let me just complete the just the, the yeah. flow there um for service steering it is the bgp car routes nlri color or the lcm color that gets used so that's like the difference between the uh, lcm ec and and the color ec it's and it's yeah. the same so that uh, that's that's yeah. let him finish let him yeah, finish yeah i just wanted to you know this was more of a you know baseline you know uh, description of what the differences between the lcm and the uh, color ec are the same holds good Uh, regardless of whether the prefix we are talking about is a you know is a dedicated prefix for a p like a loopback or a you know like a locator prefix or or it is an anycast uh, um, uh, address or prefix are you finished tj yes yes okay that's you may ask your counter question yeah so it's not much of a counter so may i was very specifically interested in the any case scenario because there is a mention in the card that when the color ec is on the card route uh, then color ec is preferred so i just wanted to know at that point when color ec is preferred on the card route how the other handling happens like uh, what gets written into the lcmc those things if uh, should or should not or like those things should help uh, operators to or vendors to implement it better so that that was my point and these things i've already raised in uh, one of the issues that i've numbered and uh, sent it to dj uh, it is it needs a text clarification it is in specific scenarios and those questions are already there so if if it time like uh, holding time we can continue to discuss uh, those uh, uh, in the uh, offline so that should be but i i still have some query so if you i can continue and uh, so that is but uh, specific to any case scenario i do have this specific, this uh, doubt because i don't know when the ec is preferred on the car route uh, so the 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 nlra at that point right the uh, the color in the nlra becomes nothing because the ec is going to be which through which i think in any case we going to do the uh steering or resolution so uh, the color of uh what do you say so uh i need to know like at uh, this point like there there are there is a specific issue that i've raised where uh, we need to know the the precedence order whatever i've raised at uh, where the route where the color in the nlr is used as actually color and or plus overloaded as a distinguisher uh, as against uh, the cases where uh, color in an array is just used as a pure distinguisher and uh, color for resolution <clears throat> is looked at for at a different place i'm i'm so, going to take so, a token here i'm going to take a token here just mm -hmm. for a moment um dj uh uh had agreed uh in our discussion last week when we were working through some of this uh to a couple places where precedence uh 
needed to be discussed uh, between LCM and the color that he's applying uh, to resolving the next top. I believe that still has not become uh, a public version as I saw early notes on it, but DJ and Swadesh are still working on it. So Nats, you may not see it until we get that next version out. Just, just, can I, just can to I be one. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I just wanted to make sure. I think the the specific issue that Nats raised, um, it is. Uh, I mean, I went through this, uh, you know, kind of long-winded uh, discussion of, uh, you know, LCM, EC, and color here, color Xnet community here, mm -hmm. specifically because that is something which we, you know, is already, uh, mm -hmm. you know, has been, uh, you know, described in the draft, uh, and the example is also, you know, present in the draft. So. It works. I mean, um, um, his question about specifically about any cash is also discussed in the draft with an example. Yes. Um, and and um, the comment that he had raised that was back in um, November, I, we, I had actually responded to it um, at the time uh, as well with clarifications on the list. So um, we haven't heard anything back, you know, from uh, Nats until now. Um, if there is something to be clarified, I mean, we're happy to do it. But I think at least on that aspect, um, you know, the draft is pretty clear. Um, uh, but yeah. I'm happy uh, to uh, see if yeah. he has any more comments. Um, I would invite you and Nats to a uh, chair's Zoom discussion tomorrow or the next day so we can walk through that comment and make sure everything's working. The only thing, DJ, that I was mentioning was in my Shepherd's report where I said you might add some clarity text on the preference between the LCMEC and the color uh, community. And I believe we discussed where that should be. There is an, there is a issue opened already Nats for your comments in CARS GitHub, just as there are is from Sundadesh's opened issue, there is an issue opened in GitHub. When I mentioned earlier that we're going to work these issues specifically through GitHub, we've uh, talked about them on the list, but I haven't, there still seems to be some conditions where they're not resolved. Um, so I want to have the proposers and the editors talk about them and monitor them on GitHub. Um, you'll find your GitHub has been added, and I hope I was clear in the introduction that we intend to resolve this one way or the other, guarded by the shepherd on Tuesday and Wednesday so that we can go to working group last call. I believe we can get to that. And so you, I will I will send the, both both editor teams some potential times and I will start to work this through GitHub. The chairs have agreed the best way on these lingering comments is to nail them because we want the ADs to be able to read that. But DJ, um, I do want to thank you for going through this example. It was helpful to me to realize that the LCMs, like other communities, that the community values are being changed at the borders of a color domain. And your example provided very uh, clarity that is was very helpful. Sure. Thank you. Now. Uh, did you have anything more to uh, say about the comments I made? No, no. Uh, so I think that's good. I think we're good. I really appreciated this example because I missed some of this. Uh, that the type 2 route is actually being in a coded uh, in the originating domain, sometimes with an LCM e extended community. Is there anyone else that missed uh this discussion 
anything we should pick up? Swadesh, did you have any comments before we went on? No, so uh, Dhananjay has replied. Thanks. Okay. OK, I believe the next one is they're going to push it. OK, so folks, we're going to push the final versions probably late on Wednesday. I will announce a question in case there's some error, and then we'll start the working group last call. So hopefully we're working on that. Any questions for the car staff, car editor team? OK, if you want to participate in the deep dive discussion, you may send me a note, and I will invite you to the chair's Zoom meeting. If you uh, want to just read about it uh, on GitHub for the details and read about it uh, in a daily summary for the next three days, I will post a daily summary. OK, now I'm going to do the same thing with uh, the CT status. So give me a moment while I find the right CT. Just a minute. There we go. OK, same discussion, same uh, the working group last call for CT is going to include CT and CTSRV6 because we pulled out for clarity the SRV6 out of the adopted draft. Nats is going to give a discussion on that since I'm not sure it's been worked on. Here's my Shepherd's report. Uh, please go to the GitHub. You will find Swadesh's comments. Now, uh, it does not, the working group does not include draft IDR multi hop next stop. Uh, I've, I think that will take some more work. The ADs again need to look at the terminology and we need to go through the director reviews. We had two excellent reviews again from the routing directorate. Notice that even though I have deep respect for Med and uh, Jonathan, I asked for two so that the ADs would see two people. But Wu gave an excellent presentation uh, on uh, Opster. Again, we got some good things. Uh, the CT team has sent out the resolution in 22 if you think there's anything. Now, the thing we have to resolve this week uh, for a sector is Magnus's review on 22. And I have a missing TSV. I'm going to see if I can ask the TSV uh, director to give me the same reviewer uh, for 22 as they did for Carr, uh, because it's the same question. Look, you're about to have a better signaling that you've, TSV folks, that you've asked for for years where the, the user can signal some better intent. Are we on the right track? And that's all we need to see for the TSV is, yep, we're on the right track. I believe we will be. Kayer gave an exhaustingly wonderful group review, and so did uh, Kayer and G. 22 came out on late on Friday night. Uh, Kayer and G are going to try to get to that, and so is Jeff. The Shepherds team will be working over time this week, um, as if they don't normally. The air again, the air directors need to give us a review of terminology and process. And Katen, I need you to look at this one. I believe your V6 and terminology have been changed, but I'm going to invite you to a uh, review. Um, 
I have not added yours to GitHub, but I will if you feel it's not clean. In fact, maybe just to be clear, I'll add your general comment. I do not have the detailed comments you said you mentioned, so you can add those in GitHub. So Desh, I've added the RTC and RD comments to GitHub. So those are our two to resolve. Again, we're gonna move very quickly over the next three days to try to capture because otherwise folks were going to, to run into the gap at ITF. So I'm trying to contain this to February. Um, and uh, just in case, Ketan, it's the specific technical issues you didn't resolve, mentioned to me. Okay. Uh, these are the links uh, that we had earlier from Swadesh. And uh, the rest, I think, is just uh, the, re the thing. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, Kali Raj's status, and then we're going to go to a longer status. Uh, status on SRV6. Please go ahead, Kali Raj. Hi, everyone. So I'm just going to present the status on the BGPCT draft, the base draft. Uh, this is version 22. Next slide, please. Yeah, so it's just one slide short. And uh, so this version, it has issues with, uh, um, from the recent reviews addressed after the previous um, uh, reviews that we had during December. So it, which includes comments from uh, KOG and uh, the comments that we received from uh, Jonathan and previously met. And uh, we had uh, the comments from Bo Wu from Opster that those were also addressed in uh, earlier version. And the sector, uh, the comments from Magnus, this is what we got through December. So this, we managed to address it now recently. And uh, after addressing all these comments, uh, city authors, we request the chairs and uh, the RTG ops sector and any other uh, uh, direct, uh, uh, directory reviewers to the review and uh, please reassess the status. And the class of issues that have been addressed, mostly they were editorial. And there was some rewording of sentences and reorganizing the sections to improve clarity. Um, they really helped by going through the iterative uh, cycles. And uh, thanks to all the review uh, reviewers for uh, stressing on the issues and uh, even minor issues, which makes the draft uh, really look good. And there was a, some cleaning up of informational normative references. So we have taken up uh, the suggestions given by the chairs and the reviewers and uh, removed the normative reference to MNH, the multi next stop uh, draft. So we just, th so there was the only reference to MNH was that uh, to see the precedence order of how the color of a route is, uh, effective color of the route is um, determined. But uh, we have uh, removed it from this draft and stated that any further draft which introduces color or transport class ID on a route will uh, update this precedence order in that document. So MNH will do it in future. And uh, the references to some other drafts uh, like CTSRV6, flow spec redact IP, SRTE, they were actually informative. So fix that by updating the informative section. And uh, after taking care of all this, uh, uh, issues. So we had already um, informed in December on IDR uh, email thread that we will be closing the issues. So we closed the issues yesterday, uh, referring to those email threads and the updated sections. So with this, in our understanding, I think all our uh, issues are addressed. So we request the chairs and uh, the directory reviewers to re-review and assess status. Thank you. If there are no more questions, I'm done. Excuse me. 
Uh, any questions? Okay, I have opened two new issues uh, that are fresh, uh, even though they were in the previous GitHub issues, um, and we'll probably link them in, or maybe Kaliraj will help me and we'll link them in to uh, Swadesh's earlier comments. We believe that this is uh, so that we can check the latest 22 version against those comments. Uh, Kate and I will open a uh, issue for you where we check it against 22. Um, and then we will close these issues before we start the joint working group last call on Thursday. I'm, any other questions? Um, for Kali Raj. Okay, we're going to go then to Nats. Now, this is the CT SRV6. Uh, you have seen this material in the original adoption, um, but I've asked Nats, just as I asked DJ, to pull out this text and uh, present it to you to make your reading this next upcoming weeks easier. Sure. So, <clears throat> hi, this is Max, and I'll be presenting uh, uh, the SRV6 portions uh, and uh, applicability for BGPCT. Um, so first we'll go through some of the background of what has been done and how this text appeared in this draft. Then the uh, seed stacking approach, which is one of the approaches, and uh, some discussion discussion on SRV6 transposition. Then uh, support for CPR and how uh, uh, CT uh, uh, constructs can be used to support CPR. And the final uh, uh, part of the agenda will be the current status of the issues that have been opened uh, and uh, the next steps going forward. Next slide, please. So background. So this draft uh, uh, details uh, BJPCT support for SRV6 data play, and uh, it's actually 01. Uh, it's just been updated. Uh, uh, this idea draft. Uh, so here we created mainly for a work group decision to uh, say that says that the SRV6 portions of the BJPCT draft we move to a separate document. And uh, that uh, said, uh, uh, the issues tracking, there are a couple of GitHub issues tracking them that I've pointed out. Uh, so that uh, drove this draft. So mainly employs uh, its tracking approach using the SRV6 endpoint behavior defined in 8986 uh, and uh, uh, draft SALI. Uh, this is uh, SRV6 into domain. So this is uh, right now at 04, it's a new update, and uh, this draft uh, adoption for that is something that uh, we are trying to go for. And uh, in and the verification of uh, the seed stacking approach and its applicability to CT, uh, if someone wants to follow the email thread of uh, what was discussed and what happened and how the issues in this area was closed, uh, can be found in this uh, uh, idea archive. Next slide, please. So uh, this is uh, going to be slightly longer slide. Uh, this uh, details uh, the seed stacking approach. So uh, let's slowly uh, uh, decode this picture. Uh, so at the, so first, uh, starting with the diagram, uh, there are two uh, autonomous systems here, AS1 and AS2 and uh, it is uh, SRV6 all throughout. Uh, between the ASBR also is IPv6. So between the two ASBRs, ASBR1 and 2, eBGPCT is running. And uh, between the uh, ASBR and PE in the same AS, IBGPCT runs. And between the PE and ASBR uh, in the cloud, uh, there can be three different types of uh, uh, intents, which is a gold, a bronze, and a best of which is uh, what we're doing. And uh, in this particular picture, um, the gold uh, transport plane is what is being uh, shown. 
uh so uh, before going into further into the pictures the top part of the picture uh, shows uh, in the yellow box uh, the service and lri or what the service which is which is uh, kind of represented by a vpn service here and what is the service set that it's carrying and uh, the mapping community uh, or whatever community currently is attached to the call community phone so and you have the ctnlr advertisements going from p2 to sbr2 psbr2 to sbr1 sbr1 to p1 at the top in the blue boxes the the gold boxes or maybe i don't know the deep yellow boxes uh, are the ones which shows uh, the packet flow uh, for the srv6 uh, 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 at each uh, how the packet flows through each of the nodes p1 ASBR one, ASBR two, and how it reaches P two. So on the right uh, uh, side of the slide, uh, it generally concentrates on the encapsulations, SRV six encapsulations used. Uh, so the B six encaps and B six end is directly cut from eight nine eight six. So that is just to encap an intradomain SRV six terminal. Replaces uh, B dot replaces uh, mainly used. When uh, an ASBR, uh, which is uh, uh, it is connected to another BR, ASBR, is advertising uh, a particular uh, SRV6 update, that's the replaces the function that's going to get used. There. So that is the new function that is present as part of the SRV6 interdomain. The replace B6 is where, uh, where uh, there is a multi hop where uh, the the ASBR in the ingress domain is advertising to the ASBR in the egress domain. In such cases, um, uh, along with the replace, there needs to be a B6 end cap that follows. So that uh, is represented by replace B6. So, and then after that, uh, the 8277 NLRA label here is uh, set to label 3. The transposition. Uh, uh in the srv6 uh, sid substructure sub sub tlv is set to zero the length as well as offset is set to zero so that the label field is unpolluted so now going to the uh, flow of setting up the path first so the service prefix uh generally is, is now like uh, flows between p2 and p1 directly either via uh, 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 a multi hub bbgp session or uh, via our service error so and uh, uh, that reaches p1 but it stays unresolved so at the second point is uh, the ct advertisements begin so from p2 uh, the loop back uh, which is uh, if you look at the n hop of the service route in the bright yellow box that is p2 loop back so the same p2 loop back is advertised from p2 to asbr2 at this point, uh, uh, the gold SID is uh, a B dot NCAP SID that will be installed in uh, ASPR2. The transport route target for the CT route is pointing to the same mapping community, which is gold. So from ASBR2 to ASBR1, the same P loop back. So this time, the next stop is set to self by ASBR2. And as we discussed about the replace B6 uh, multi hop is needed at this point. ASBR to replace B6 is added as the gold sit and the uh, transport route target is called. And when the same packet travels now re uh, after, say, the gold tunnel is resolved, uh, the ASBR1 uh, advertises it to P1 with ASBR replace, which is like a single half just, and uh, with the ASBR1 loop back to P1. So at this point, uh, the advertisements are done. So uh, in P1, what it needs to do, so it's an ingress of a particular AS domain. So at this point, uh, it has to replace it for this particular, uh, to reach this uh, P2 loop back. So if service route wants to loop, uh, reach the P2 loop back. It will actually uh, add, uh, the replace it is the operation that needs to be done. And on top of that, there is another uh, operation that needs to be done, which is uh, adding the intradomain tunnel, which is a B dot N cap or a B dot N C. So it's one of those. So uh, those two parts are added in the packet. So uh, that uh, so with respect to since uh, ASBR one loopback is what needs to 
be resolved to reach uh, P2 loopback. So uh, ASBR1 loopback is uh, uh, added with the end sit. And uh, uh, um, then the service route is now uh, added with the replace. So when it comes down to ASBR1, at this point in time, uh, the ASBR1 uh, uh, now uh, what it needs to do is just to update uh, the IPv6 DA with the uh, replace six uh, replace uh, B6 uh, at this point in ASBR1 when the packet reaches it, uh, it is replaced with uh, replace B6 and uh, it is uh, uh, sent to ASBR2 because uh, between these two it's an inter AS link which is uh, going to carry the packet out so there will just be a single set so and at this point then it's entering the second domain s domain uh, so there again now it needs to do a b6 and caps uh, as well as it needs to do uh, uh, the it, uh, so the replace happens to b6 so the um, the at asbr2 uh, the asbr2 replace when it's seen it will be replaced to ASBR2 B6 end caps, which is uh, what is going to encapsulate, uh, saying that uh, next is to encapsulate the next segment, which is uh, nothing but uh, the encapsulation of the gold tunnel. And that is a uh, P2 end set. So these two go up to P2, and then P2, it gets decapsulated, and it's taken uh, into the service uh, uh, chain. So uh, that uh, completes this uh, slide. I'll give a pause. Yes. I'm sorry. I was oh, talking hi. to a muted mic. You can go ahead oh, and okay. ask the question, Keitan. Uh, hi, uh, Nuts. Yeah, thanks for this uh, uh, detailed explanation. Uh, I just had a, I had some questions on the data plane part. Uh, uh, are this like the packet coming with two IPv6 end caps uh, all through? No, uh, not all through. So at the ingress part of the domain, uh, uh, between maybe. domains, it's a single uh, uh, stack, but. Uh, okay. Within the domain, uh, the, sits, the stack size is always two. The replace and uh, this uh, is generally remodeled after the label swap kind of an operation where just the uh, segment gets replaced. So the maximum size, uh, the stack size will be two at any point. Okay. And the packet direction of packet, as you explained, is from P1 to P2, right? Yeah, so yeah, the advertisement is uh, from, from P2 to P1, and the packet is from P1 to P2. Right. So I'm just looking at the packet at P1, and uh, the first, uh, the upper, uh, or maybe is it that outer uh, or the inner uh, IPv6 header has source as the ABR1, ASBR1. Is okay, that, the it's a bit outer... confused. Yeah. So the thing is, the intra-domain tunnel has to terminate at uh, ASBR1. Once the intra-domain tunnel terminates, uh, then what happens is ASBR1 will look at uh, the next segment. And in this segment, it will try to do the replace option. Right. But the source here is, is ASBR1. Uh, should it rather be P1 in this case? The source address. Source address. Yeah. So, so sorry. Source is P1. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, similarly for the packet which is going from ASBR2 to uh, the P2, right? The source should be probably ASBR2, right there. So the uh, source in uh, no no the the, 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 in, the upper yeah. header, yeah. Again, okay. upper header, yeah. Right. So at this point, it should be at this point, it is. Uh, at ASBR2. Okay. Okay. Uh, the, um, yeah. Okay, Nats, sure. will you send a corrected slide that we can post? After, after, yeah, after. I will. Uh, surely, Susan. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Now, that doesn't have to be now, just afterwards, so we get a clear posting. Yeah, sure. 
Yeah, sure. I, I I think so. This is aligns with draft Sally, basically. That's what this approach is. Right? Yes, it's aligns with okay. draft Sally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Swadesh, did you have a question? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I have a question on as uh, uh, Ketan referred about the source address. That is fine. I think that can be uh, corrected. The question is for on the ASPR one. Uh, I see you are doing a replace function, right? So when you do replace function, I see that your SRH is also getting modified. What makes the SRH modified from ASBR1 to ASBR2? Because SRH, are you trying to add a SID into the SRH on ASBR1? No, I think it's only the test is getting modified. The SRH, I think, is will remain the same. I think that's again. But if I see the example, it yeah. shows ASBR two. It's changed. It came with the from the P one. It in the in the SRH. It came with B colon ASBR one colon replace colon colon one. But what leaves from the ASBR one? It's not just a destination change. I see SRH is also changed to B colon ASBR two. So. Adding a SID into SRH, I don't know any such operations I have seen ever. No, no, no. I oh. think uh, there is a, actually in a typo. I'm sorry. Uh, the That won't change, but it's just that uh, uh, IPv6 DA gets updated to replace V6. Okay, so That's that is fine. Draft test. Sure. So that means you will carry ASBR1 replace end to end here. If you don't replace, if you, if you are saying SRH will not get changed, you will be carrying the B colon ASPR1 replace B6 end to end, even though it's not used, right? Yeah, that is actually one of the comments recorded uh, by Shun one that stays in the in the HRH. Even though it's of no use, right? Anyway, yes, it it's already, stays it's in the HRH. Uh, on ASPR1. Yes, yes, that stays. Yeah, so That's I, right. I think we should try to optimize. I'm not sure what is the functionality. It will help with yeah, optimization. We did discuss, uh, but uh, it's a good comment. Uh, but I think uh, here uh, that is how uh, even we closed on the comment that there will be this one that's staying on the uh, packet. Yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to yeah, it's an extra unnecessary data we are carrying. It's fine. So another comment was regarding the implicit null. I know in this. In this, uh, at least, uh, topology you are showing SRVX is end to end. So the things are much simpler. But when you have a migration sort of thing where you have an existing MPLS network and now you are trying to migra migrate to an SRV6 technology within the AS or between the ASPRs, what might happen is for a given, for a given uh, CT route, you might have to advertise to some legacy boxes MPLS label. And to some, you might have to advertise a SRV6 SID during the migration. So now what can happen is a, a, a legacy box which receives your SRV6 update because it can happen. It will in, interpret the implicit null as an actual label. So if you don't have an MPLS, that problem is not there. But if there's a legacy box, if you if that receives your update, it will think it will interpret the label as an uh, three though it's a it's an intermediate box so three means you don't have to put a label so it will do a misrouting in that case so in the migration cases i'm not sure your yeah, this yeah. Can work. i think katan's comment is accurate that the comments you're making swadesh apply to draft sahil no 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 so this is about ct uh, suzanne so, no, so no, this the, is about the the CT encoding, CT is put, what CT is saying with the SRV6, you have, because we they are using uh, Safi 128 encoding, VPN encoding. So there is always a label field in the, uh, in the NLRI. So now what to put in the label field? Because there's no MPLS, it, see MPLS VPNs or VPN address family was natively for MPLS because it's a label ah, field okay. carrying in the uh, NLRI. So now, since it's this is only SRV6, what to carry in the label field? So what the proposal is, there won't be any transposition. And uh, the, what authors are saying is they will carry the implicit null in the label field. Now think about on 
so this update is coming everything's fine from pe2 to asbr2 to asbr1 but in that domain on the left domain you are trying to migrate means from srv6 for mpls to srv6 so your p1 is srv6 fine but there could be another pe2 which could be an mpls p okay yeah so, so this Suresh, update got your question mm -hmm. yeah got your question i think this has been discussed in one of the threads uh, in uh, between you and yes. karthik Hey, yes, Gajaj, yes. Uh, are you here? I would uh, like to take this question. Like you to take this question. Yeah, I'm waiting for the mic. More discussion. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's all yours. Thank you. So basically, because we disallow transposition, the MPLS label field is free to carry an MPLS label. And the cases where it is a pure, I pure SRV6 network, that is where the label field needs to carry an MPLS it now. So if we are advertising a route to a MPLS enabled speaker, we can, of course, carry a real label as well there. So the route, the BGVCD route can carry multiple end caps. It can carry an SRV6 end cap and it can carry an MPLS end cap as well. So SRV6 receiver will use the SRV6 end cap and uh, your MPLS receiver can use the MPLS uh, label that is being carried there. So it is not saying that it has to carry only MPLS now. So the MPLS label field is free to carry any valid MPLS label. So only for the case where it is like a pure IP uh, SRV6 network, there we said you will be using MPLS now. But otherwise, so, it will be like uh, the regular procedures for any other MPLS P. So the assumption here is Kaliras that they, on that given P, like P1, you will not have any MPLS enabled at all if it's a pure. SRV6. They, for any other services or other purposes, you cannot have MPLS enabled. So PE1 can be either pure IP, pure SRV6, or it can be pure MPLS, or it could have both SRV6 and MPLS. So if you either. if if for the given BGP CT route, mm -hmm. you 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 have you are it is just you want pure IPv6 services, SRV6 services, you will put implicit null, right? Yeah, if if the network is a pure a pure SRV6 network, then you can put implicit now. Otherwise, you are saying even for BG, if, even for the given BGP CT route, mm -hmm. if it was a SRV6, but for some other purposes you have MPLS, then you cannot put. You are saying that, right? Yeah. Let's, like say, let's, let's say you have a, let's say you have a network, you have a mixed MPLS and SRV6 nodes, then your SRV the BGP CT route will carry both an SRV6 and cap as well as an MPLS label. No, I have a uh, my question a little different. Just just mm -hmm. try to see what I'm trying to say is, from BGP CT point of view, it's pure SRV6 because it's a SRV6 service is running, right? But for some other purposes, you can have a RSVPT running between P1 and ASBR1, correct? It's possible. Mm -hmm. So at that time, if you say, if BGP CT routes because this in this case just a SRV6, you will carry with the implicit null. Or you are saying even in that case also you say. Even though BGP CT is not using MPLS, you, you you have to carry an MPLS label and allocate so, it on the ASPR one. Yeah, BGP CT is a transport, right? So it depends mm -hmm. on what the services need, whether the services need both MPLS and SRV6 or they need only SRV6. No, I'm if saying services, at least for the this case, a services is just a pure SRV6, right? Swadesh, Whatever I want to take in the second example, Swadesh, yeah. uh, is pure SRV6. Yes. So now, if you agree uh, on that, but there could be an SR RSVPT running from PE1 to ASBR for something else in the network. You don't know. Correct? No, if yeah. that's the case, right, uh, man. Uh, both MPLS as well as this is what is described for pure SRV6 network. So okay. in the case where you have both uh, data planes uh, uh, live and running in 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 the in a particular area then the label will be a valid label, BGPCT label. Because transposition is set to zero, the label will be unpolluted. So I, I think I, I, I think you follow the questions. For CT, we don't need MPLS at all. I completely agree in this case. But just MPLS is enabled between P1 and ASBR for some other purposes. I'm not even saying what purposes, correct? It could give be an example of what purpose it is, then it will be more clear. It could be for other. internet. Let's yeah. say there's an internet running between AS, P1 uh, okay. and ASBR, which is over the RSVPT, right? It's possible. Swadesh. I'm mm -hmm. losing I'm losing track of the example and I need to see this example. I'd appreciate if you'd send uh, you have two choices or you may do both if you like your uh, 
chair, a shepherding chair, please send the example to the mail list. Second, I will take the example and we will put it in to the SRV6 portion of GitHub as we'll load that one separately, okay? But I need to see the example where you mix it specifically. Would that be, would you mind doing that for me? Uh, sure, so I have sent this earlier. I think Kaliraj uh, responded. Thanks for that. If but I Kal still have the Kali same comment exactly. Yeah, Kaliraj. Kali Raj, if I'm I'm not tracking it to your mail, Swedish. So if you would help your chair by resending just the portion with the example, so we can work through the issues uh, in the next few days. That would be sure. helpful. I, I think I will resend. Uh, yes, I, and I think you I can even respond. you yeah. can mm -hmm. if you typed yeah. it in, point to the message, point to the location in the message. I don't mind pulling it out. And Kali Raj, uh, I'd like to make sure we specifically answer that. Um, is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, I will um, I will also just uh, note down the section in the BGPCT draft that talks about this. So that would be also... that would be what I thought we should do in responses is get get the example, get the section in the CT draft or the CTSRV6 draft uh, that talks about it and or both and just put the issue. You can put it on the mail list. I will eventually put it in the GitHub so we can specifically resolve it before we get to Thursday. Okay? Sure. Ketan, did you have something Thanks, separate? Thank you. Uh, yeah, so the scenario that I wanted to discuss about this uh, implicit null is between PE2 and ABR, ASBR2. If we take okay. Uh, if we take a look, a look at this from BGP LU perspective, then P2 for its own loopback would have signaled implicit null to ASBR2. Uh, Kaliraj, uh, do you agree? Yes. Okay. So MPL label M3 implicit null is a valid MPLS label. Mm -hmm. Now we have SRV6 uh, here, and P2 does not support or is not enabled for MPLS. Mm -hmm. But here we are saying that with CT for SRV6, the NLRI would carry implicit null, label mm -hmm. 3. Mm -hmm. Or the third option is that PE2 has both MPLS and SRV6, in which case also, because it's still an implicit null label, it would still advertise the label 3. So my question is, how is ASBR2 going to know or understand whether PE2 supports MPLS or not. My, I mean, my point was that it cannot distinguish between these three cases. Yeah, so my answer to that was that ASP2 does not need to distinguish. Basically, that implicit null is telling ASBR2 that at the BGPCT it does not need to impose an MPLS rule towards it. Okay, so now if AS, if P2 did not support, let's say, uh, MPLS, mm -hmm. and ASBR2 sent a packet to it with outer label as, uh, you know, there is no outer label, right? It may be its IGP label and a VPN, MPLS VPN label. So the packet is going to, when it comes to P2, it's going to hit P2 maybe with a, uh, you know, a MPLS VPN label, and it is not enabled for VPN, MPLS. Right. You see my point. Um, so, what you are saying is, um, if you receive a BGPCT SRV six route from PE two, yes, and then PE two advertises a MPLS VPN route. No, it's yeah. Mm -hmm. So if PE2 advertises an MPLS VPN route, then it does support MPLS, right? Uh, okay, uh, so okay, so it's, I think, uh, yes, in that case example. Okay, I will try to um, 
I'll try to work out an example where uh, this is. I see this yeah. as a basically based, based on whether the route is requesting a MPLS label or a SRV6 uh, SID. So the ASBR2 will be imposing that. Yeah. Okay. I, I okay. okay. I, I get your question. I'll I'll try to come up with an example and I'll share Please. it as soon. As share goes. it on the list. It will go in GitHub and you'll be asked to resolve it. Okay. Uh, did. Yeah. There we go. And I'm still here. Uh, I can resume. Good. Please resume. Okay. So. Uh, so the BGP CT family, SRV6 transposition is turned off. Transposition length and offset is set to zero in the six sub sub TLV mentioned in RFC 9252. So uh, the encapsulation format in the draft have linked it to uh, the details of that mainly to ensure correctness during MPLS SRV6 interworking scenario. CT draft has some deployment scenarios that uh, talk very in detail about MPLS, uh, MPLS plus SRV6 and uh, one or the other being absent uh, in the other domain. So uh, the transport part of the SRV6 shall not pollute the MPLS label 8277 MLRI and that's the correctness uh, to which we are leading to. Next slide please. Uh, the next is the support for uh, colored prefix routing, which is another IDR adopted draft. Uh, in color prefix routing, uh, the service SIDs are color encoded. Uh, there is one unique service SID per uh, color allocated from the color service SIDs locator, and each color or say each transport class will have its own locator. This is an IPv6 address, and uh, and uh, this is a, a subnet you can think of from which uh, a, a supernet will be, uh, or like a prefix will be allocated for uh, services. So uh, there will be n colors. Uh, in that, if there are, say, uh, m prefixes, the total number of uh, service sets color encoded set will be n into n multiplies m. So, and then uh, here, one thing is IPv6 is used as both the surface as well as the transport family. Uh, the colored SRV6 locator is advertised in IPv6 family with the mapping community, which is uh, in this case, uh, the IPv6 family takes the transport uh, uh, route, which is the color SRV6 locator, and it adds laps a color community for that. And uh, colored SRV6 locators resolved uh, to the uh, corresponding color SRV6 intra domain tunnel, and that uh, in IPv6 reducing the resolution scheme construct. Uh, that is one point where CT gets used, uh, applied into the IPv6 family for each mapping community. So there is no uh, CT family involvement in this, but uh, it is just the construct of, of uh, adding, adding a resolution scheme, scheme which could uh, 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 get this in motion. Uh, the, the in this approach, the set is not stacked. Uh, the uh, packet is uh, forwarded on IP tunnels, IPv6 tunnels. So next. So uh, just a, a copy of the previous diagram in this uh, with the same P's and ASPRs. Uh, so at this point, the colored SRV6 locators uh, would be uh, uh, gold and bronze. The color service read will be gold SID1 and bronze SID1 because this is all configuration of no real CT and resolution and uh, no CT family is used. Transport family is IPv6 plus a color a community, EC. Uh, resolution scheme is an IPv6 uh, locator resolution over uh, intra domain SRV6 tunnel using the mapping community. So uh, that is how it's getting resolved in each of these domains. And uh, the forwarding happens through the subnet, which is the SRV6 color locator, which will be in the IPv6. So P1, ASBR1, ASBR2 oh, will have this resolution scheme configured for IPv6 family. Uh, mapping community will be a color EC. And then uh, forwarding is uh, IPv6 color coded service set 
uh, longest prefix map uh, to IPv6 color locators, gold and bronze. So it's just by view of L LPM, it just gets forwarded once it's uh, put in motion. So just the resolution scheme is needed here. But uh, again, it, this particular uh, uh, solution for SRX6 can uh, will, will interact with CT and apply. Next one. Yeah, so, so some of the next steps that are needed and uh, the current status. Uh, current status that it's uh, scheduled for the last call, and we still uh, see that there will be some issues to solve. Uh, the progress is uh, for this um, SALI inter in SRV6 interdomain draft. Uh, needs to get uh, adopted, and uh, these inputs that's been shared uh, will help us uh, go through uh, with that in spring. Uh, the updated uh, the draft of final comments from Susan, and uh, there might be uh, so so it's better that uh, this new draft can be reviewed, and then if there is any additional things that we need to do, uh, that can be done. So uh, that's it from me. Ethan, you had a comment? Go ahead. Or oh, did you so want? Are... So, we are first. Go ahead. Sure. Uh, uh, thanks, Nat. Then, Nat, can you go a couple of slides uh, earlier when you'd explain about the correctness of the update? Yeah. So, uh, uh, CT have chosen using the Saf Safi one twenty eight like encoding which natively carry the label in the NLRI field, right? That's even though it's a new SAFI, uh, CT authors have taken the approach that they will use the existing similar like SAFI 120. And therefore this problem of correctness come into picture. And since now there is a label field in the NLRI and in the pure SRV6 cases, you have you have to fill that label field, you carry the implicit null, just try, trying to hint why that correctness was needed because of the choice that CT has made. The second part was, as we discussed earlier in the procedures, you have to signal the replace it or the draft sally replace function, which is a function or a value which would be unique per prefix, right? Because we're talking about the transport. Since that value would be unique per prefix and you are carrying that reason in the BGP attribute, you will not get any BGP packing. You can only pack maximum one prefix per BGP update. So it is fine. I think it's a choice that CT has made. The only thing that you, it was requested during the adoption and we have done as a part of the card draft, I would I would like to see the results of the CT when it's for the, they are carrying the SRV6 sets with the replace set. What is the packing they're getting and uh, how much bandwidth and control plane bandwidth they're using. I think that that data is missing, though it was discussed during the adoption call, uh, that data is not there in the, uh, packing update analysis. So if that data is added, that would be good for all of us. So one clarification there. So basically the correctness problem does not come because of using 8277 and LRI. The correctness problem is introduced because of the transposition um, mechanism in SRV6, which overloads the 8277 and LRI uh, label field. So that is one thing I want to clarify. And yeah, so that's the, uh, just to counter that ex exact comment, you had an option to use it's it's a new safi now this is not like we are using uh, 20s or safi it's a new safi you guys defined in which you chose to use uh, safi 128 like encoding so i'm not sure uh, it's correctness because you are using something which is defined for natively for mpls now trying to define for srv6 and you propose to carry implicit null and therefore you call is correct i think it's a wrong way to come to that conclusion because okay. choice yeah, choice I, 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 uh, yeah we Swadesh. hear you we hear you yeah. Swadesh yeah. and Krali Raj, <laughs> i think we've we've heard that there are pros and cons to that choice uh i think we've gone beyond understanding what's there um i think you both expressed that that the 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 choice there had pros and cons. I don't think we're un are uncovering more information that's new. Is there something new that we've missed? No. So, uh, so the only request I had when I mentioned that was uh, the 
during the adoption call, one of the things that was raised was about update packing, and we need to put that data in the GitHub. So mm -hmm. I, I, I think CT draft still does not have an example with the SRV6 because it will carry a you know attribute which is unique per prefix, which has to carry a replace set. So that data I, I would like to see to see how much BGP uh, uh, performance uh, okay. they get. Okay. Um... Can I respond you to that? Like to see, you would like to see, go ahead, Kali Raj, did you have something to that specific point? Yes. So basically, whatever uh, test results have been given uh, in CT, those were like real experiments that have been conducted. And with the BGP CT route carrying um, the transport class of target, which is also like an attribute. So in nature, even if it is like a prefixed attribute or a transport, it's a transport class target, so it's already following the method where it is uh, breaking packing, if you can say like that. So whatever uh, results that we have seen for MPLS uh, BGPCT, those can be extrapolated for the BGPCT SRV6 as well. Okay, so we will pick this up in the private discussion. Please read Jeff Sauce. We're now to where I'm heading into the send hold timer. Kali Raj, we may have to hold the multi next top in the next interim, you will get the first slide uh, slice on that. I had said, uh, is there any other critical? Is there any other comments we have? I, I've, uh, well, I think Clayton hasn't made his. I have the scaling comments um, that we need to come to some. Shepard's uh, discussion of the scaling of the SRV6 um, support. Go ahead, Keaton. Did uh, you have something new? Yes. Uh, so for the last slide uh, that was there. Which slide? Uh, the, the last slide, uh, uh, the next steps, yes. So uh, first, thanks to Nats and Kaliraj for uh, spawning this into a separate draft. Uh, I think it address some issues uh, with the base CT proposal moving forward. Uh, but now I see that uh, we are trying to do working group last call for CT SRV6, where the underlying spring draft is not even adopted by the working group. So there my is question is that, more for, yeah, so my question that, is more for Sue. Uh, should we not uh, push this out till uh, later? Uh, uh, it, I have yeah three drafts like that in for spring uh i started out with saying i needed to discuss that there are in the car draft and there are in the uh ct draft uh other uh other drafts from car this is one that I need some help on from the drafts. There are, just a minute. Can you give me one second while I grab for my text so I quote the right ones? There is, this is one of the problems, Ketan, that I have three of these um, in spring that are not necessarily through working group last call. There are, uh, there's Agua Spring SRV6 MPLS Interworking. There is HR Spring Intent Routing Using Color, which are informational. And there is this one. I am trying to get a read from the Spring folks whether this Sally is going forward soon or how we will have to hold it. If my my current discussion with that is to assume something function like this will go forward and to go forward with an um, SRV6 call. I suspect we may have some in the CT SRV6. We may have some additional comments and may have to go to a second working group last call. I think in that time, we'll probably get through, um, we'll probably have this draft either be there or have some function like it. 
So, Katen, my best guess, uh, basically, you've asked a really good question, Katen. My best guess is to go ahead with it and uh, see what other results fall out. Um, because I have a number of these with spring, and I think the process is going to be a little longer. I think it also answers questions on the base draft. So, Shepherd's Choice, uh, guess there's no perfection. So, good point. Yeah, I mean, my only point was like we were discussing earlier in this, uh, in mm -hmm. the slides, comments, uh, it would not be fair to, you know, uh, pass, uh, like give comments on something which is uh, under draft Sally here. So, it's like a really normative dependency uh, at that uh, point. Again, so. Uh, it's, but we can discuss it if uh, you know during the last call. I, you, you like to take I, I think in this last call, you need to look at it and say, is the functionality that Sally has something that would be a problem? If you think it's a problem, call that out separately than calling out the procedures, because I've already noted it's got a dependency. I've already noted we got to go to spring, but at a certain point, we've got to make some forward progress. Uh, so, yes, call out that this is a functionality you uh, absolutely hate. Okay, I'll take it to spring. Call out that you don't think it's the right description of it. Fine but we'll make some progress on trying to get further down on the discussion. So I'm afraid that's uh, Shepard's choice. Uh, there's no really 100% good on this one. And I suspect we're gonna go a second round on the uh, CTSRV6. And it was my encouragement to try to get a, a more holistic set of uh, draft groupings. So you're welcome to say I told you so later, Katan. <laughs> okay. Um, I think I'm going to ask if there's any last comments and then I'm going to go to send hold timer. Okay. Ying Zen, it's your turn. I'm not hearing you. Or is anyone else hearing her? No, I can't hear her either. I am not hearing. She had successfully tested her mic earlier, so it's probably something silly like a mute button. Hello? There you go. Wonderful. It's all yours. I will run slides uh, for you. OK. Um had to refresh my connection. I don't know what <laughs> happened. But anyway, <laughs> so, um, I'll present an update of the BCP send homework, send hold timer draft. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, uh, a bit recap of what the draft is about. Uh, the problem happens when the remote peer has a TCP receive window of size zero so the local system cannot deliver uh, keep alive or any bcp messages if this broken remote peer doesn't close the connection the bcp connection may remain open for a long time and this may cause a lot of problems so this draft proposed a 
to use a stand hold timer to address the issue. Uh, the basic idea is uh, the timer will expire if there isn't any BGP message successfully delivered for some time. Next slide, please. The po proposed change to the BGP finance day machine is very straightforward and trivial. And we will look at some details in the next couple of slides. Uh, next one, please. Sue, so, next slide, please. Hello. You are an update to FISM-1, or is that what you're seeing? Uh, slides number four. Go to yes. next slides. Okay. You want to go to slide five? Uh, four. Oh, my screen is freezing. Uh, I I don't see slide four. Uh, you guys see it? Oh, it's just me. I we see, see slide, slide four. Slide four. Okay. I actually, just assume. I. Huh. Okay. So. You. So you're on slide four. Ben, you can see slide four. Huh. Okay. So update to the uh, finance state machine. We added two new mandatory session attributes, send hold timer and send hold time. For the send hold time, we have a default value of eight minutes. Um, this might be able, you might be able to configure it independently. And this is up to the implementation to decide whether they want to support a configurable value for this one. And then we have the uh, timer event. That's when the send hold timer expires. Uh, and it's a mandatory event. Next slide, please. Okay, you are now on slide five. Okay, I, now I can see it. Um, so about this timer, well, the timer is started with the uh, local system is in open confirmed state and it receives a keep alive message. That's when the local system transits from open confirmed state to established state. And that's where this send hold timer gets started. And every time when there is a BCP message successfully delivered, such as keep alive or update, then this send hold timer is reset. Next slide, please. So what happens when the send hold timer expires? Um, the local system will send a notification with a BCP error code send hold timer expired to the remote system. Um, because the remote system might have a receive uh, TCP receive window size of zero, there is a chance that this notification is not delivered. But we are trying to send a notification anyway, because you don't know exactly what will happen. And this will uh, have a record on the local system and possibly on the remote system. So this send a, this notification is a change it, in the latest version of the draft. And of course, the local system will also log an error message, uh, release all BCP resources, drop the connection, uh, increment the connect retry counter, all of things, you know, uh, do the dump oscillation if it's set to true and change the state back to idle. So these are just the regular operations almost like when you keep alive when your whole timer gets expired your regular whole timer and next slide please uh, i don't see the yeah i'm on oh, okay the, yeah, yeah okay status. i see it so implementation stats, we already have four different implementations and you may think about it. And next slide, please. 
So uh, next steps, we are looking for more reviews and comments on this draft, and we'd like to request an early code point allocation for the notification. And of course, we'd like to request working group last call. And that's it. So we will request early IANA code point allocation for working group last call. You will need to insert, you can then insert the IANA code point allocation to your test, your uh, implementations, and they can do the final test. So I will do that based on your report, uh, unless there is any objection. Okay. No objection. I will send that in and then we will, uh, as soon as your uh, implementation, as soon as we get the code point allocation and your uh, implementations to update to it, then we'll request working group last call and that should go uh, through quickly. Yeah, that, that works because this um, code point allocation is necessary um, because we, you know, in the latest version, we changed this to a real notification instead of just log it locally. So this needs yes. to be an IANA assigned code point. So we need that prior to working group last call. Okay. Right. Yep. So working group last call will start later. Um, any questions on this? Okay, um, any further questions on send next top? Folks, how are we doing? I had moved Kali Raj uh, to give Ying Zhen 20 minutes. I can let Kali Raj go forward with the multi next top discussion or we can move that to the next interim. Any uh, feedback? So, so uh, I suggest uh, deferring it. Uh, it's a chewy subject uh, that I'm I sure is going to generate a lot of uh, discussion. So I don't think 10 minutes is going to be enough to do it justice. I don't think so. Well, so I think uh, I thank Kali Raj. You'll see his slides. We will put it on the first agenda. Please note the next interim is for new drafts. You know, so if you've got a new draft, you have to post it a week beforehand and then send us in slides. So please read the announcement. Thank you again. Uh, and I will follow up with Katan and uh, Swadesh and Kali Raj and Nats about the GitHubs. Thank you all. Have a Thank good day. And I give you back hopefully a couple of your minutes. Thanks, everybody. See you later. See you later. Thanks, Sue. Thanks. Bye. Jeff, do I have to stop the record or does the leave automatically do it for me? So it's automatic. Pardon? It's automatic. You can just leave. It's automatic. And... Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.